One of the things we all learn as kids is the primary colors are red, blue, and yellow. I remember learning two things about primary colors. I learned that you can use the three primary colors to mix any color in the color wheel. And two, I learned that you cannot mix the primary colors. But it turns out we have some reason to doubt both of those things. In the art world, primary colors are something of a controversial subject. Can you actually get every color out of red, blue, and yellow? And are there other candidates out there for the primary colors? Is it true that you can't mix the color red? It turns out that not everyone views red, blue, and yellow as the primary colors, and they have other candidates that they say are the true primary colors. This video is a primary colors showdown, where I pit primary colors against each other to find out what are the true primary colors. Or are they even like the Highlander, where there can be only one? I'm going to be taking four different sets of primary colors and mixing a color wheel out of each one. With the color wheel that I mix, I'm also going to take each mixed color and stick it on a digital color wheel to see how my range of possible colors for that primary stacks up against the full range of colors that actually exist. So let's get color mixing. We're going to start off with the traditional three primary colors, red, blue, and yellow. Now the results that you'll get out of color mixing are highly dependent on which red, blue, and yellow you choose. So I kind of just have to make a judgment decision on which colors I want, but these are the ones that I like to use in my painting. So if you happen to use, uh, say, a cadmium yellow, Instead of this, your color wheel is going to look a little bit different than mine. One of the things that you'll already notice as I'm making this color wheel is while I can get very vibrant reds and oranges, I actually get a pretty dull looking purple. And this shows us something about color mixing in general. Color mixing is subtractive. What that means is you lose saturation when you mix two colors together. Using our purple color as an example here, I'll never be able to mix a purple that is as saturated as a purple that I get straight from the tube. So we're already seeing that the first thing I learned about primary colors as a kid is not true. I can't technically mix every single color out of these primary colors. Our three primaries give us a range on the color wheel, not the whole thing. So it's not true to say you can mix every color in existence from primary colors. It's true to say I can mix every hue, I can get some kind of a purple, but I can't mix every color. And now we'll take this color wheel and we'll map each color onto my digital color wheel. And this color wheel may look a little bit different to you, this is called the Yermby color wheel. And the benefit this one has is that it spaces out the actual distribution of the color spectrum a little bit more accurately than our traditional color wheel. So out of my red, blue, yellow primary colors, here are the colors I can actually attain. I can get really vivid warm colors, bright blues, and even okay greens, but my range of purples is low. I'd also probably be wanting more greens if I were painting a landscape. Okay, now we're gonna do a really fun one. The hardcore color geeks out there will be aware of what I call the printer's primaries, cyan, magenta, and yellow. These are the primary colors in your color printer. You may have seen CMYK on your printer ink before, and that's what they're talking about. Cyan, magenta, yellow, and then K stands for black. And so for my printer's primaries, I'm going to be using quinacridone rose for my magenta, um, phthalo turquoise for my cyan, and azo yellow for my yellow. The existence of these primary colors raises a serious question. I've been told that primaries are colors that can't be mixed. 
So is that true? Can I mix magenta and yellow together and somehow get red? Can I mix cyan and yellow and get blue? Let's find out. Well, it turns out you can mix red and blue. Honestly, this was mind blowing to me the first time I did it. So after this, I guess cyan, magenta, and yellow are the real primaries, right? Well, not so fast. Let's map our mixed color range onto our color wheel. We see here that these primaries share the same limitation as our red, blue, yellow primaries. We can access only portions of the color wheel. In fact, you can see that compared to the first primaries, we have access to far less saturated blues. But in general, we do have a wider range of overall colors available to us with cyan, magenta, and yellow compared to the primary colors we always hear about, red, yellow, and blue. I love these primaries and I use them a lot when I paint. I especially like the nature of the purple, blues, and cyans that you get. I think they're really unique and beautiful tones. So for our third set of primaries, we're going to be doing something totally different. We're gonna be using the color red, black, and a really dull yellow. So you may ask yourself, why would I ever choose to limit myself by taking three primary colors that are already pretty neutral even before I mix anything together? One of the reasons is if you choose a set of primary colors that already have limitations built into them, the colors that you end up mixing together will have a uniformity and a coherency that is really beautiful. When every color is just a little bit closer to every other color, they all hang together in this really lovely way. Another reason you may want to limit your primary colors is you could choose primary colors that best suit the subject that you want to paint. This palette of colors here is actually very popular among portrait painters. It's something called the Zorn palette, which was created by a painter named Anders Zorn. And one of the benefits of this palette is it lends itself to getting really great flesh tones really easily. So I talked about how limiting your primaries lends itself to every color in your painting hanging together better. And I wanna talk a little bit more about what I mean by that. When you have access to absolutely any color you want, I think you run the risk of your paintings looking garish and unrealistic. Think of some landscape painting that has overly green grass and overly blue sky. It kind of looks like something a child might have made. It takes a lot of subtlety and discipline to tone your colors down to make them work together and a limited palette takes care of this naturally. Now, of course, there's nothing wrong with a painting looking unrealistic and for colors to quote unquote not hang together. It all depends on what you're going for and there are no rules in art. But if you're dissatisfied with the realism of the colors that you're creating, using a limited palette can really make your job a lot easier. So let's see the range of colors that we can get out of the Zorn palette. All right, so here's our Zorn primary color wheel. And talk about a limited palette. The only vivid color that we have to work with is the red. And uh, the yellow is looking pretty vivid now compared to everything else around it. You'll see that between red and black is basically just a long variety of different browns. But an interesting thing happens when you use this palette. If you look at a painting that's done with the uh, Zorn primaries, you'll see that the color black actually starts looking kind of blue. It's a very interesting visual effect. Another benefit you can see by looking at this color wheel is what a wide range of skin tones you get. If you look from your yellow to your red and then going into your black, you've got this lovely expanse of different skin tones to choose from. For our fourth set of primary colors, we're gonna do something really crazy. We're gonna use the three secondary colors as our primaries. What? 
Is that even possible? <laughs> this demonstrates another advantage of limiting your palette. You can use the limitation to create atmosphere. Think of the atmosphere on an evening in your backyard. The sun is setting and it's casting this warm red light across your green grass lawn. Look at the specific color of the green grass now. If you took a color swatch, that green would look very, very neutral. That's because that red light coming from the sun is actually limiting the possibilities of colors that you can see in the world. A truly vibrant green can't even exist under red light. That red light is going to hit the green and it's going to neutralize it way down into something that is far less saturated. We can use the limited palette to our advantage by creating those similar types of atmosphere. Making a color wheel out of these secondaries will create one kind of atmosphere, but you could literally choose any three colors and make a color wheel out of it. This is something that graphic designers and digital artists use frequently. They'll take the entire color wheel and they'll cut out a specific small triangle of colors within that color wheel, which is something called a gamut map. Then the artwork that they create will only include the colors that exist within that tiny triangle of colors. And it doesn't have to be a triangle of colors either. You could make a painting with just two colors. Say you pick just red and blue, and then you mixed a bunch of swatches from there, and then those were the only colors that you could choose for your whole painting. Limiting the gamut of options that you have at your disposal is a fantastic tool for creating a certain atmosphere or visual effect in your painting. All right, so we've got some really fascinating results here. In the past, I never would have thought that you could take the secondary colors and get primary colors out of mixing them, but that's exactly what we see here on the palette. We've got a really beautiful blue tone that we mixed from purple and green. We've got a wonderful brick red that we got out of purple and orange. And we've got a dark brownish yellow that we've mixed from the orange and the green. So our primary colors showdown is complete. And what's the result? Is this like Highlander where there can be only one set of primaries? Or is everybody a winner in their own way? Well, I think it's clear from our showdown that there is no one set of primary colors. You can use three different colors to mix an entire color wheel that includes every single hue, even if it doesn't include every single color. If you're looking for a set of three colors that gives you the widest possible range of colors, I think the winner is clearly the printer's primaries, cyan, magenta, and yellow. But the traditional primary colors of red, blue, and yellow are a legitimate choice for getting a very wide spectrum of color possibilities. One of the reasons the traditional primary palette has lasted as long as it has, I think, is also because we have a good range of pigments that give us paint that has great color, great opacity, a lot of opportunities for creating the types of paintings we want. You may have noticed in my printer's primaries and in my secondary primaries that the majority of the colors I used were somewhat transparent and some people prefer to paint with more opaque paint. The Zorn palette was extremely limited, but it gave us a very wide range of colors that work really well with skin tones, and the colors all hang together really beautifully because they're so close together on the color wheel. And our secondaries as primaries shows us, I think, that limiting our palette to any three colors doesn't have as much limitation as you think. And those limitations give you great opportunity to create an atmosphere and a mood in the work that you're creating. So I'd encourage you to play around first off with painting with only three colors, and secondly with choosing three colors that maybe aren't the traditional primary colors, but might limit your painting options a little bit. 
So, as the judge of our primary colors showdown, my verdict is that the winner is primary colors in general. I think using just three colors as your painting is a fantastic way to develop a mastery of color, to unify your paintings, and to create very specific moods and atmosphere in your work. So if you've never tried painting with just three colors, give it a shot. And if you want to learn more about mixing colors, I have a free one hour color mixing masterclass on YouTube. You can look around for that, and that is a fantastic way to learn how to mix from the primaries yourself, as well as match any color that you see out in the world. Thank you for spending time with me today. If you enjoyed this video, then follow my channel. And if you want to help me make more videos like this, you can support me on Patreon. I've got a link down in the description. Have a great day, and happy painting, everyone! Thank you.